So we've got The Death of Stalin by Georges Bordeli. This book is something else. I don't know if it's good or bad. I really, really have not made up my mind. But I'm hoping as I talk through it in this video, we can figure it out. I like to start by talking about what version I have. And what I have is an absolutely beat to death first English printing. My copy is from 1975 and it is falling apart at the spine. Some of the pages are starting to fall out of it. It really sucks, but I got it for 50 cents or a dollar. I can't remember. And I just found the book fascinating, even though I'm not sure how I feel about it overall. It was definitely fascinating. I'm going to be all over the place with this review, and I've noticed I'm all over the place with reviews when the books themselves are all over the place. And The Death of Stalin is all over the place. You start at the beginning, and it's talking about Stalin being rushed out of the city of Moscow, from the Kremlin, out to his country home. And it gets into the nitty gritty of how there's one street that runs runs right through and you have to pass a special background check to be allowed to live on the street that Stalin drives down to leave town. And there's secret police all over this street. And when he goes to leave, all these secret police come out, they clear the street, they clear people off the street, and they're guarding at every corner all the way through. And they fly out of town in this motorcade with Stalin's limousine at, you know, 100 miles an hour or something like that. They can get out of Moscow in mere minutes when it would take anyone else close to an hour. Just weird stuff like that. I mean, he gets into the nitty gritty. He talks to eyewitnesses for it and they're like, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. It drove by all this kind of thing. Diving into super nitty gritty things is a theme through this entire book. And I will say that even when I got lost, because he's talking about people I know nothing about and was not willing to take the time to look up on Wikipedia, uh, it's interesting. The prose is very good. And I say prose because I don't know what word I'm supposed to use. The author does a fantastic job of sinking you into your surroundings. So the weightiness of being in Stalinist Russia and the paranoia and just the weird things going on. By the way, this book could just be called All the People Stalin Killed Before He Died. I mean, every single page in this book is like, oh, well, yes. And there was this guy. Guy, and him and Stalin were really close and he helped Stalin gain power and then Stalin killed him. It's like, oh, and this guy was part of Stalin's cabinet and they were really close and then Stalin killed him. And then you get a real surprise, a big change of pace. It's like, oh, well, this guy was one of his closest allies and Stalin put his wife and children in a prison camp and threatened to kill them. You get a little background on Stalin about where he came from and the people he killed that knew where he came from and how much he went out of his way to obscure like his early life after he became a dictator. And it talks about the power plays of the people that were trying to stay like close enough to Stalin for an opportunity power, but just far enough away that he didn't kill them and just weird things like that. And then it goes into the whole mess in uh, Soviet Russia of the the quota systems and the five-year plans and all that. And it talks about the gulags a lot because well, Stalin was a big fan of gulags. One of the things that annoyed me about the book also forced me into reading it in record time was the book is one long tease. It's called The Death of Stalin, but I don't even think he dies until the last 30 pages of the book. The whole thing is just one constant tease. Each chapter feels like it kind of builds towards Stalin dying. Then he doesn't. Then the next one is like, well, and then this happens. And then I'm like, is Stalin dead yet? Is he going to die? How's he die? I honestly don't know. I want to know. And then nothing. And then nothing. And like I said, it's me reading, wanting to find out how Stalin died and what happened afterwards. But most of the book is about all the people he killed. Then after Stalin is dead, you have what seems to be the most bizarre power struggle that lasts a few days. And then within like months of his death, everyone's like, who? Like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, he did things. This book is probably incredibly entertaining for people who know a lot about the Cold War or have gotten real deep in the weeds when it comes to the history of Soviet Russia. But for me, I'm just a, a casual um, authoritarianism enjoyer. And so I wasn't sure what I was going to feel about this book. When I started reading it, I did feel compelled to finish it because I wanted to see what was going to happen. 
But the main thing I got out of this book, other than how many people Stalin killed, was a lot of entertainment from just how well the book was written. I really enjoyed it. I think that he is a fantastic writer. And the fact that I finished a book about something I didn't really care that much about just because I enjoyed the writing really says something about the book. And while the, the book's not bad, it's just not something that I would normally read. And I just think that might be a really good thing for a writer. You managed to write a book about something I was only barely interested in, and I was compelled to read the entire thing incredibly quickly. I was fully invested. You do get some interesting anecdotes from different people hearing about his death, and a lot of them are really cool. These people who suffered under his rule, the amount of joy they have finding out he's dead, it's pretty good. I enjoyed those. And then the epilogue is really good. But overall, if you enjoy Soviet history, then you will enjoy the death of Stalin and I can recommend it to you. And I would suggest getting one of the first edition hardcovers. They're not that expensive. I think they're $15, $20 in good condition online. So grab yourself one of those. And I guess I don't have anything else to say about the book. It wasn't really something I was interested in, but it was written so well that I had to finish it. It's a constant tease through the entire book, which is very frustrating, but it's a pretty entertaining tease. And I learned a little more about a part of history that I hadn't paid much attention to beyond the whole grand scheme of things. So overall, I don't know what else to say. So I'll see you next time.